Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I've got the Umidigi Bison Pro and just real quick, I don't know how much it goes for exactly because on one hand, it's saying on Banggood it goes for $160 and on Amazon it's for $240. Um, so I'm not sure if they're both the same. If they are, then obviously Banggood is the way to go. It's a trustable website. It probably takes, takes a little longer for shipping. Um, either way, I'll have links down below for both of them if you want to check it out. I appreciate Umidigi for sending this out and all the specs are located on the back here. Um, compared to the regular Umidigi Bison, it seems like it has more RAM. Um, the processor is a little better, or the GPU at least. So it's got an MTK Helio G80, Android 11, um, 8 gigs of RAM, 4 gigabytes of ROM. So 8-4, I wonder what that means. Then 128 gigabytes of internal storage. That's nice. Along with a SD card, a micro SD card slot. 5,000 milliamp hour battery, 6.3 inch full HD plus 2380 by, or 2340 by 1080. Uh, back 48 megapixel camera. That sounds like a lot of course, but we'll see how it really is. Inside the box is the phone itself. Um, and it is uh, kind of a kind of a thick phone, obviously, to be expected. It feels like it's thinner to hold than some other rugged tablets or phones that I've tried. Uh, underneath that is the user guide. The wall outlet is a 12 volt, 1.5 amp, the USB. And this is a USB-C cable. The sticker has all the information here, like this says that this is the 48 megapixel camera, 60 megapixel camera is the second one, and the 5 megapixel on the bottom, with an LED flash, which is kind of smaller than what I expected. This might be the infrared thermometer that they talk about. The volume keys are on the side here, with the power button down there, and then, what's, which button is this? A customizable button. And I wonder if that's the same as this one here, the PTT SOS button here, because in previous ones or previous devices that I've seen this is that this was also customizable, um, but mainly used for emergencies. But sometimes I would accidentally press it when I'm holding onto it, uh, and I didn't really like that. Also, the fingerprint scanner is on the side there. Then there's a SIM slot on the side, and thank goodness it's not a pin SIM slot, because those are those are pretty tough to get off if you don't have a pin. And actually, this is kind of hard, too, if you don't have long nails. And these are the two slots. For anything else, I'm just going to remove this plastic. And underneath that is a speaker. Wow, that looks really small. I hope it's not going to be... It looks like it might be disappointing. And then there's a bottom part here for a carabiner clip to put this on your backpack or wherever. A USB-C port. I wonder if that's the microphone or reset button. And on the side here, there are these bumps which are nice in case if this drops so that it won't get damaged too badly or anything. And if we take this front part out, there's also a screen protector that comes in pre-installed. There's a small notch up here for the front facing camera and the speaker phone is on top here. I don't know if you can see it too well. On the side uh, are metal and that just makes it feel premium. And then on the back, uh, besides this Bison Pro part, it seems like it's just a uh, something like a soft texture. I'm not complaining, just observing. And I've got the fingerprint scanner. I've got everything set up pretty much. So the fingerprint scanner works like nine out of 10 times. It's really accurate on this one compared to other devices I've tested out. And I did take a screenshot of how much storage was left. And obviously there's a decent amount, only 17 and a half gigs were used out of 128 gigabytes available out of the box. And there wasn't much blower either, except for the Zello piece which I think when I click on this button here, Zello shows up. Oh no, this is actually for the camera, my bad. And to, this is actually a nice little emergency camera to get for emergency purposes. And to exit it, you can just press the power button. But I think if you hold it, it'll take you somewhere else. Oh, it'll turn on the flash. And then if you double click it, that'll be a screenshot. On the left side, it's for measuring the thermometer. And then if you hold it, you can set up an emergency contact. Whoops. Should probably go home first and then just hold that button and it looks like it's not working unfortunately oh there we go uh, that took a little longer than before but yeah you can set it up to have a sos function or a contact so probably 911 out of the box this seems to be pretty smooth doing basic tasks like going into uh articles and just browsing the web everything seems pretty smooth for the most part not too many delays here or there there might be some frame rate drops or images might take a little longer than usual, but that's actually not as frequent compared to other budget devices that I've tried. Mm. Interesting. It's a little hard to see. 
the screen. I'd say one of the most important things of buying a rugged smartphone for curious some people is how you can view the screen outdoors. And the screen is viewable outside. Right now, it's uh, there's still sunlight out, a good amount, and I can still view this. I know on video it looks like it's pretty dim, but it's really not, so I can still view this. It's probably a little harder in some areas than others, but overall it's viewable. When I say it's a little harder, it's like when I'm trying to look at the details in a, in a video while, I'm, while I was recording. Here are what the pictures look outside. The, I'm not sure if it's just the screen here, if my brightness is too low, but it looks like it's the color is just slightly dull. It's actually somewhat sharp, and I can appreciate this. The front camera is also pretty good, better than what I expected. Definitely one of the better uh, cameras, if not the best front-facing camera, because this is a Sony camera from what I hear. Press it once, you gotta press it down kind of hard. Not too hard though. The speaker can get covered with one finger, that's not too surprising, and it sounds kind of tinny. Not too bad, not the worst one, but definitely not that nice. That's probably the worst thing about this um, smartphone. And videos can be seen watched at 1080p on YouTube, but other streaming services like, like Netflix and Disney+, Plus, it's not going to work. Here's a still image from the show Daredevil. This is a really good show, by the way. I'd recommend watching it if you haven't. And uh, I guess in video, it's a little hard to see, but... It's not that clear, being at um, as if you were playing it at 1080p, or it's not. It doesn't feel like it's in HD, and that's one thing I hate about Netflix and these other streaming services is that they don't really show exactly the resolution or to be able to change the resolution. They don't give you that option. But yeah, videos are going to be capped at 480p. Took a few tests on the Geekbench score here, the Compute and CPU, and the scores were not that high. Surprisingly, not that high. But luckily, this doesn't translate to performance all the time. And I say that because, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this was pretty smooth so far, and that hasn't changed. This is still really smooth. I haven't really noticed much lag or frame rate drops or whatever. I even tried gaming on it, and uh, games do run pretty well here. First game we're checking out here is Mega Man X Dive. All the games I check out are free on the Play Store. This thing works just fine. I don't really notice any frame rate drops. Next game here is called PGR, I believe. And this is one of those anime cartoon games that's available on the Play Store. I also have uh, Genshin Impact that I'll check out. And so far, it looks like this handles stuff pretty well. I'm pretty impressed at how well this plays. Next game here is Roblox. This seems like a pretty simple and straightforward game. The only reason I'm playing it is because almost every video that I get on a tablet or Android device, someone always asks about Roblox. How does it work and how well does it play? Well, I played another game besides this on here, and uh, it worked pretty fine. No problems, really. Finally, I got Genshin Impact to download. I accidentally left this running for a while, so I'll show you the battery life um, after I'm done playing this. So far, this game seems to be running pretty well. There might be some like frame rate drops, but overall, it's playable. Pretty much everything I throw at this seems to do a good job. Let's try a really high-end attack right there. Looks like we got those slimes taken care of. So when I had this on for a couple of hours straight with the game running in the background, it got really warm to the touch. Like on the sides, everywhere pretty much, it was like warm. Not too hot, but warm. Um, and that was for several hours again. And then the battery life did not last too long. It was four hours and 28 minutes of screen usage since full charge. So if you use this, uh, if you use this without taking any breaks, the battery will, battery will not last that long. But... In general performance or regular use, I'm not sure exactly how much because this does have a pretty large 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It just depends how well optimized the battery is for this. I will have an update video on the battery life on how it goes and probably in general another update video. So be sure to subscribe for that and leave a like if you did find this video helpful. Also, one last thing before I forget or two more things is that there seems to be an update for some, uh, some bug fixes here. And finally... One thing I kind of forgot to mention is the camera back here is protruding. It's not synced in. And the reason why that's a bit of a concern is that if you drop this phone flat, the camera is the first thing that's going to take a hit and it can get damaged. And this happened with another phone of mine that 
or another rugged phone. It was like really well built and everything survived except for the camera. The camera like got damaged. It didn't like become, it didn't break completely where it became completely unusable or anything like that. But just something to watch out for. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.